Hey, you know what? You know what it is? It's a, a yeah. I'm wearing purple. Okay, a shade of purple. I know you think it's burgundy. What the heck? Oh, but I got the uh, organic anti any oxygen force. Talk about a force. Yeah, we're going to talk about a force today. A force. A force in actually a force in the world. I mean, not just music, but just a force, right? So that's there. Let me see. Antioxidants: pomegranate, tart cherry, red grape, purple carrot. Purple carrot. Check it out, right? Wow. Uh, cranberry, blueberry. Not from concentrate. One hundred percent smart juice. Organic antioxidant force. And we're gonna. Oh, now I got my hands all wet. I don't know if I can ever open this thing now. Uh, <sighs> Antioxidant force. Anyway, we're going to be talking about uh, Prince Rogers Nelson. It's his birthday. Well, birthday celebration. He. Uh, oh, this is getting embarrassing. I don't have any. Uh, you call that rubber? Oh, here we go. Now he was born. Uh, uh, well, uh, basically eight. What's it? No, no six. The six. Yeah, uh, six fifteen or something like that. In the PM, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 6:15 in the PM, babe. <laughs> you know, 6, yeah, it's more 6:15 in the PM. Anyway, the point is, right? Uh, that that was a Pacific, whatever, not Pacific, Mount Minneapolis, Minneapolis, huh? Right? And uh, we're on the East Coast now, and it's uh, basically a quarter after seven. You know, I didn't realize that we were born at this, we were born approximately the same time, dude. Usually different, uh, <laughs> usually different, uh, not usually, uh, different uh, years and, of course, places. Let's see what this purple juice is about. Wow. I'm interested in that purple carrot. Okay, I guess I shouldn't really have this on. No, I'm going to leave this on. Look, I got to tell you about... My relationship with the phenomena of Prince uh, back in, uh, what is it, 19, I don't know, so like, it must be 80, 80 83, something like that. Uh, maybe it's 82. Uh, I was, uh, uh, anyway, I was married to my second wife and her, her oldest child, uh, uh, Clifford. He, he, had a, he had a friend and, and I was in the radio and I'm always dealing with young people, you know, trying to. No, what I know, I give them, whether they accept it or not, right? So uh, we, we were just talking, and, and they were sort of like, yeah, it's just in the middle of maybe getting in trouble, because there was about, I think there was 16 at the time. And um, so I asked them, I said, well, you know, I'm on the radio, and, you know, if you could do a radio program, yeah, radio, um, what would you do? And they said, they, uh, without hesitation, they said, we do a print special. Now, I knew about Prince, and I was going like, oh, man. You have to understand, WBAI, <laughs> old people. Yeah, <laughs> they when I was, they, they had at that time they had no hip hop or anything that that yeah the regular whatever they did, and certainly not Prince. So I devised the special. It was an incredible special. First of all, I, I asked um, uh, Paul Wonder and and uh, Hoppy Slossy for their time slots because it was like a pledge period. You know, they wanted to. The, any it, it ended up I think uh, Hoppy had a I don't know five hour program uh, and Hop and. Paul had a whatever four and a half hours. Some they were long. So uh, basically, from from uh, midnight to basically at the eight thirty a.m. That's eight and a half hours. We had the time slot to do a print special. So naturally, they would they started working. Now the first thing I did, we made these these uh, promotion cards you know, for the station, and it was at the it was going to be at the end of um, and, and somewhere in December I think it is, and um, and and so yeah, it was a December drive. And, and, and so they had it all together. So at the beginning of the month, because at, at the beginning of the month, I waste up. I put these promotion cards on. It was for one was done by Bernard White, the other one was done by Lynn Samuels. Uh, I, I I did one and they did one. So we had four cards in rotation. Okay, the best card actually was Lynn Samuels because then I'm, and of course I mixed the cards with the new Prince music, you know, announcing the special. And then the whole month. I started the whole month because I had to get these people used to because they wasn't into print. I mean, they didn't know nothing. They're old people. <laughs> and so I started very subtly, every, every almost like every three days, whatever. At first, I had I had a uh, one of those alligator clips with the feathers. It had purple. So I'm like, put that in. 
I think I no, I didn't have locks at the time. No, I think I had my braids. I had something at the time, and I stuck it in my head because I was walking around there. Then I would. Then I had a. Then like I put a print shirt on. I mean, it, it, gradually as the weeks go by, I like more purple and more purple so people are talking but they're playing the cart we got a lot of play okay great so um also also we was ready to do the special so uh, purple rain had come out and uh paul wonder who was the film critic for wbi he had connections you know with hollywood i mean you know because he knew uh, uh the, the the producer of, of jaws you know he was friends with his son or something like that anyway uh so paul went and got a copy of the film purple rain it was like the actual film somehow, I don't know how we had it like that. So the sound, you have to understand, sound, you know, back then we, with the, what they call quarter inch tape like that, what they would record on like say maybe half inch tape at the most when they was doing professional things, right? What the movie sound was recording, I think it was like three quarter inch tape was a, a, a larger thing. So that means it was more surface, which means you have bigger sound. So, so, so the movie's like two hours, whatever it is. So we was going going through the special was great raising money da 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 da. Then as as near the end, we played the film the entire film, and that sound was so amazing. It was like nothing you've ever heard. Just it was, it was incredible, you know. So anyway, so so then they then we, then we started. Then I thought well, that was it. But you know, then we started to do print specials. You know, uh, like we would, that was in December. So every December and in, 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 in his birthday in June, we do these specials, right? And um, then the group started to grow because first it started out as, um, <clears throat> in fact, I have a picture. I have a photo. First it started out as, uh, here someplace. Uh, uh, oh, here it is. Right, right in back of my, Henry Duma performance that we did in the early 80s. Ah, okay. Now this photo, photo, I guess you can see it like this. Let's see if you can see it. This photo that was taken by Michael Mayburn, uh, you can see on a wall over there it says Creative Unity, because what I had done, I was an executive producer of Creative Unity Collective, a, a radio program. Um, and well, anyway, uh, so helping them, I was training them in radio. Okay, so Michael Mayburn, who's a, he was, he, he's doing a lot of photography because I met him all at, at the School of Visual Arts. Oh, Michael Mayburn's oh, uh, peace and blessings on his, his father, uh, Harold Mayburn, pastor uh, last year. Um, anyway, um, so Michael took this picture, and what it is, if you can see, oh, that's why it's a good thing. See, that's me right there. So you got the, because Prince had all the things, so I got the, I had some fur thing on that they had around the station. And you can see, I think, uh, is this the one? Uh, there's another photo, but one of these guitars, when I first, there's another photo, we have the car told me, okay, wait, this right down here, uh, 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 he's got a guitar, but uh, Cliff is really a, a drummer. We call him CT3, right there. That's uh, Wanda's son, right there. That's him there. And here is Dion. That's his friend, Dion, right? So those are the ones we did the first special, right? In fact, I think Bernard was the engineer. Okay, now you say, well, what's this girl up here? Okay, so we did the special and we started going along. And so people started to notice. And people, like they're waiting for the special. And then people started graduating. It's like a little thing. Then this young lady here, we call her Baby D. Right there. Baby D out of Staten Island. Right there. That's Baby D. In fact, we did a Crave Unity. We did a, 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 a video. Man, that, that thing was a groundbreaking. This was 84, 85. We did a video. Um, called Baby D and the Boys. You know, it was an amazing video. <sighs> man, uh, Bavati Best has it. I think he, man, I don't know. Somebody has that copy. That's, that's an incredible thing. Anyway, so so then because Baby D came into the fold, I renamed the group. Well, we was just Prince Special. Then I, uh, no, uh, um, yeah, I, re I renamed the group because would, we would play these, um, uh, uh, you know, um, um, bootleg copies, whatever happened. There was one copy and we couldn't figure out what the word, it, it sounded like, um, uh, the new boogie groove or something like that. So I named the group, our group, the boys and girls of the new boogie groove. So that name stuck. So after a while, people start noticing. And finally, said, this guy um, named Steve Marshall came by. Okay, let me hold on for a second. <laughs> okay, I have to understand this. I have abandonment issues. <laughs> I won't get into it right now. But basically, what I do, 
as I set something in place, when I see that it's going and I can see it can, it can get his leg and go on, then I leave him alone. Like creative units, for instance. I, I was executive producer for them for, for the first year, officially, da 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 tell them what they did, 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 did. But the second year, I was just in name only. So Michael Mayburn became the executive producer of creative units. I was the executive producer of something, whatever. Um, and then, it's the same thing happened with, who else did I do that with? Um, uh, the same. For instance, oh, another person that came in on the phone later also was Jay Smooth. Now he came to the station because when I was doing my program, that was much later. Oh, well, well, anyway, when he came into this situation, how he came to uh, WBAI, Jay Smooth, uh, uh, the Underground Railroad. Oh, you, come on, you know what? Um, he uh, he came because I had put out the word when I was doing normal radio that I would train anybody, any young person would come by, I would, you know, help them, whatever. So his mother heard about it and told him, but he had been listening to Creative Unity for a long time and knew about the print special. So naturally he shook on down there and I, I basically trained him as an engineer and, um, uh, you know, I trained him thoroughly. And in fact, so that's a whole other story. We'll talk about some other time. But he was he was the first person that had, or at least in that station in New York, maybe, he, we did uh, an official hip hop program. Uh, um, that's it. But but it's the same situation. I uh, basically executive. I don't even executive produce uh, Underground Railroad for long. I just started, and as I see he could do it, I uh, just back up <laughs> like that. So anyway, so that's my thing. I, I I get things going, and then I, you know, I'm just watching, watching. If it's going good, I'm going. Give you an example. I actually live in Africa, and uh, there's this project that I have with villages and whatever have you, as uh, using using audio drama as community development. And I have this guy there, right now, Mr. Chloe is there, and he runs my thing. And I, he was with me for a long bit of time, and I put everything in place. And luckily, we're in a COVID situation right now. I can't get back into South Africa. <laughs> they they closed the borders right now. But my what I'm doing, it keeps on going because I don't have to be there. You see, people are in place, and they they do it. And it's the it's always about the project, not about me. Back to the back to the story now. So, so Steve Marshall comes through, and uh, and right away I'm going like, hmm, not right away. But, hmm. He hung out. He's diligent. Da da da. And I said, okay, escape time. <laughs> no, I would I say it like that. So what I did, I made Steve the executive producer of these specials because he was cool. he he was working it. You know, and I would come, of course, I would support, but I wouldn't, you know, I wasn't da 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 da. So that's how it it happened. So so basically, and Steve. Steve came and he was in charge of everything. Anybody else that came into the group, he was in charge of it. And to this day, he said, Steve Marsh is like, if I need to know something about Prince, like, like for instance, I was, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to, uh, who was talking? Nelson Davis over the phone, another Prince head. Uh, he's out down in Atlanta. And I was, and I was saying, how many, how many, how many songs do you think that Prince has? You know what I mean? He's trying to estimate, you know what I mean? I mean, if you, if you start with, with, you know, uh, 78 and you're going up to say 90, you might have, Okay, let's say if he's doing uh, an album a year, you know, including, well, an album a year, we're not, well, we're including double albums, but not, but anyway, if you say it, it, it's like 10 records to an hour, which is wrong, 10, then you have three, what, 300, you know, what, 300 uh, songs. But if you, then from 90 to now, I mean, to, to when he passed, I mean, I mean, the guy with the catalog, I mean, just, it must be, I don't know, 3,000 songs? I have no idea. We should put that out there. Who knows how many songs Prince actually has? <laughs> this is really an interesting question. Anyway, back to the point why, why we're talking about Prince today. So, um, I mean, I just um, I had to do a transition for my for my brother uh, today. He passed. My older brother, he passed. So I did a transition, the whole, whole, whole thing. So this morning I'm doing a transition. But I also uh, realized uh, 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 that, so I'm doing a transition today. And this is uh, like a nine, nine, seven, nine. Nine days I have to deal with this, but that's in the morning. But now I'm just oh, I got to celebrate Prince. So now I, you know, I, so I'm dealing with. Ee, it's interesting. Anyway, that's only in my mind. So, um, so that's it. The Born to Prince. Ah, it's it. I think there is a um, Steve and I. I did when he passed. We did. I put. I'll try to put a link in, uh, in my interview section of my of this YouTube channel. The interview this interviews I do. Um, there is a thing. It's called Afro to Afro. Uh, me and Steve talking about. Of Prince, and I say Afro, Afro, because his first album had a, you know, had Afro, he had Afro, you know, the, the four youths like that, and then, then the last album he had an Afro. So I said Afro to Afro is the name of is the name of the thing. Um, but the importance is, is more Prince is more important than people realize. Um, I know there was a, a thing that they played, uh, the BET did when Musicology came out. And they asked some really intelligent questions, and one of the things he said, they, they said, well, what music do you listen to? That's all, all, all the, uh, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> all if you do the same thing. If you have a music, you know what the questions are going to be. And so he says, I, I, I'm making so much music all the time. I don't, I don't really listen to new to music. And my music is what I'm doing. See, that, that's very interesting. It was an interesting answer. Um, but what it is is the reason Prince. If you look at his thing, he step by step. First, he played homage to the to, to the forms of music that went before, and and step by step until uh, then his own stuff. But he, he really we didn't we really don't believe that he he got into his became Prince. You know uh, the 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 whole thing about the, the sunrise or whatever it is um, until I don't know maybe maybe right before nineteen. Maybe music, no, um, the symbol, you know, ah, uh -huh, ah, uh -huh. you know, you couldn't pronounce the name, but we pronounce it, ah, uh -huh. that's how we pronounce this name, <laughs> the, the symbol, right? But that one where he did Emancipation, and when he when he started to do, uh, on record, on record, not just tour, like, uh, uh, Bet You About Golly, Wow, Wow, uh, I Can't Make You Love Me, those kind of uh, cover tunes, you see? But then you could tell, you know? So finally, when you come to musicology, and he's out at the live shows, he's playing, homage to a whole lot of people, you know, uh, all the people that went before, you know, a lot of people that influenced, you know, James and and, uh, and Sly and, and uh, Santana and, uh, you, know, you know, the likes. Uh, uh, so, so anyway, so, so, so as I was looking forward to this, uh, um, um, just a piano and mic tour because it symbolized this whole thing. His, his growth, you can check his growth. He starts with things like Erotic City. He grows and says, ah, that was when I was younger and I've matured. I understand certain things. Da, 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 da. And so the um, uh, mic and piano tour, whatever it was, it was just him and piano. That was a perfect thing for him. It was just a perfect thing for him. So uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get to see that tour. I would I would have made it somehow. But I saw many of the tours from Left Sexy, the early stuff. In fact, my most memorable time uh, was when uh, Mem TV, I think they had the 10th anniversaries, whatever. And uh, our one of our DJs, Delphine Blue, she was the, uh, they hired her to be the DJ for this event, the, the MTV, MTV, MTV event. But since I was, this is in the 90s, since I was arts director, Delphine said, hey, he, she knew I was a princess. Said, hey, I'm going to, you want to hang? I said, sure. <laughs> so it was interesting, but it was super interesting. MTV, think about it. I'm sorry, I have to go up. I, this is, I guess in this charge, racially charged, you can understand. If I was we used to, of course the DJ was up on the balcony second floor and I was with her in front of us was all the, M the MTV ex executive or to the side was executives right the white hair guy but and if you looked at the whole place right there's I can you can count it may have been like maybe maybe 20 black people I don't know it was a very small number because the place was nothing but white people these were all MTV employees and stuff like that but when I looked at them I said you know all these people look they could be like their cousins or, or their, their nieces and nephews I should say or their grandchildren or whatever it is so I can understand why they hire people that look like them I can understand I can't understand but that's all about racism but what's more interesting I had locks at the time there was only about four people in that whole joint that had locks so I'm just trying to say you know that if so, so, so I think that a lot of times uh, Prince was understood all that stuff, and he was really um, behind the scenes. What can you do? He's doing lots, a lot of charities. You know, he did the Erica Badu charity, he did the Tiger Woods charity, a bunch of charities where he, do, he was slipping stuff. You know, initially uh, when he would people the code, so he's always doing stuff in the back, and that's why I leave celebrities alone. I don't say, you know, they should do this, they should do. you don't know what they're doing, you know what they're capable of, you know how they have to protect their sources, you know, they have to make, do something on the slide, you know what I mean? So, Lee, especially, I'm sorry, I have to now do the, I guess Minneapolis is from, I guess I should say this, um, this whole, uh, what we're doing right now, trying to put pressures on the celebrity, they got to be able to speak, no, we don't need celebrities speaking, we need them back, or celebrities should be bailing people out, that because other voices, have to, real activist voices have to come out, a celebrity, if you're a singer, that's your main job, you can still be an activist, but now we, okay, you leave all that stuff alone, so anyway, so we're celebrating Prince here, and that's why we're here, <laughs> it's a good day, um, so if you have enjoyed Prince throughout the years, and if you continue to enjoy Prince, I mean, I'm telling you, I have so many, I don't have them physically. I used to buy, you know, the bootlegs. I would get, I had all the CDs. I think, who is it? I think, now who has what? I think that Lace has the CD, my CD, Prince CD collection. I think that Steve has my LP, you know, my LP collections, you know, the vinyl collections. I don't know. But, you know, they have it because cause Lace is a Prince head too. So there we are. Um, my little thing with, with, with Prince. So, um, 
I've always appreciated myself. Many, many concerts really appreciated, uh, you know, the whole 2000s. I'm not around because I'm, I'm living in Africa, but I was going to try to make it uh, back home and try to get a ticket for the, the, the uh, words of music. I figured he would come to South Africa sooner or later anyway, so maybe I might be able to see him. But that's not to be. Um, and um, rest in purple, rest in peace, rest in prince. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. This has been T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Letting you know what I only suspect. Actually, what I know about Prince and the evolution, as we know. That's, that's it. Prince was not a revolutionary. I know you want to say that. Prince was an evolutionary. Continuing to evolve, 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 evolve.